Hello everyone, how the heck are we doing tonight? And actually it's tonight for us, maybe daytime for you. You may be in the vehicle on your way to work or it could be a lazy Sunday afternoon, but welcome to EMPP. This is Ed Madison Podcast Project number 30. I made it to 30 um, and what better person to have on for the 30th podcast than my friend Josh Fox. Say hello, Josh. How's it going? There you go. Josh came over to hang out tonight have a little bit to drink, play some music. Uh, before we did this, he actually um, he performed a few songs and I will share those. One or th two or three, I can't remember which, how many, but either way, you'll see that I'll share those in maybe right down here. Oh, I must have been a fool back then. Be able to check those out phenomenal talented musician um I, I don't know i feel like i've known you now for a while and it's usually through a lot of a lot of friends that i have that are musicians just through other musicians and things like that and we can revisit that but while i give him a chance to introduce himself like always i'm gonna be tapping into another bottle of the beautiful balvini 12 year and uh go ahead introduce yourself looking forward to the uh the whiskey there. Um, is that why you came over? That's the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, well, uh, my name is Joshua Fox. I go by Josh. Um, been knowing Ed now for, I think, 2009 is when we met. I'm pretty sure it was around yeah. 2009. So about 10 years now. Wow, um, Jesus, bro. I know, 10 years flew by. He actually was my neighbor at one point. We lived like about three or four houses away from each other. Oh, um, that's right. I'm a songwriter, musician, uh, been playing guitar. I got my first guitar when I was 13. I am now 33, sorry to say. Uh, 20 years now, deep into the guitar. I've been playing drums uh, longer. Didn't get my first drum set till I was about 12, but I played before that. Um, currently work at Kraft Heinz. Um, I have one son who uh, is eight years old, he'll be nine in April, and I have oh, wow. another son who is not biologically mine, but I still call him my son, and he is three. Very cool. Yes. Very so, cool. Yep. And I remember when you um, when you had your your kid, your child, mm -hmm. before, I mean, it's been a while, of course, and he's eight now, going on nine? Yeah, he'll be nine in April. Jeez, man. It's like my kids, too. It's the You know, just recently turned 12 and 15 this year, and... Just I feel super old. The nice thing is you, even though you're 33, mm -hmm. he doesn't really have any gray hairs yet, which is yeah. nice. I have a few, believe it or not, but you know they're few and far between. That's good. I don't pull them anymore. It's just you know you pull one and there's just another one the the next day, and it just you just realize that you're fighting a losing battle. So. You never win it. I mean, I plucked them out of my beard for the longest time, and I'm like. Just gave up because they were just coming in too strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my girlfriend said she likes it anyway. So I guess I got that going for me, which is nice. But That's good. Yeah. Um, anyway, cheers to you, sir. Cheers. Episode 30. Thanks for being on the podcast. Episode 30. This has been a long time coming too. just to be fair. In the past, at the end of the podcast, I may have said, and I'm going to have Josh Fox on next week or something like that. And um, I've had to reschedule with him. So we've, ma we've made it, though, to this date where we... Where I was able to help make this follow through with Josh, and I'm excited he's here. So cheers. Totally stoked. So yes, so you brought up something that I almost completely forgot about. We were kind of neighbors, really close by. Was that when I lived on Smalley or Cannon? That was when you lived on Cannon Street. It was Cannon. Okay. Yes. Yep, that's right. And you were down into the side or something like that. Fairview, which is, you know... Literally, you were th like three or four houses away from Fairview, and I lived the second house on the corner. So from my alley in the, in my backyard, uh, probably took me 10 seconds to walk to your house. That's it's like right. that close. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yep, exactly. So, And then I, I met him, like we talked about before the podcast, or maybe on the podcast I mentioned too, because I meet a lot of friends through musicians and things like that. Um, I knew this gentleman first and foremost as a drummer, hell of a drummer. And, and he's done some cool stuff with me in the past. We 
hung out and I, I we kind of talked about this off camera earlier but we went to guitar center in des moines a long time ago because even though i know him as a drummer he's a hell of an all-around musician he sings he plays guitar he's, he's a drummer which you will you know you won't see the drumming part but you will see the uh, guitar singing part in the other videos we recorded. But uh, we went to the Taylor Road Show, I remember, mm -hmm. in Des Moines, and which was cool because you went with me. I appreciate it. That was a hell of a lot of fun. It was a blast, man. It, wasn't it like the product guy just basically explaining, this is why we do this? And I remember the demonstration on the cases, which was kind of cool. I don't know why that stuck in my mind because I think he was trying to explain that you know, if, on, if you're flying somewhere and you're a musician and you're worried about your case and they were demonstrating, mm -hmm. they had one there. I felt like that was beat up and old, but it still just had its, its form. Right. So, um, and then after we went through this Taylor road show and checked out all these sweet, you know, of course they had Amazing the color ones there and they had all the you know, the custom type ones and the Brazilian Koa guitars. Oh, yeah. They had that baritone guitar oh, that was like yeah. $9,000. It was ridiculous. Exactly. It was amazing. Right. So, and then afterwards we were kind of hanging out and then of course they had the drum room there and Josh was killing it on this, uh, this Roland. I'm pretty sure it was a Roland. I think it was. It had to have been V drum kit. And, uh, it's, it's funny because now I own one of those that a lot of my friends know already, but, uh, you, know, you see a lot of cool inspirations through the years, drummer friends. I've, I know a few drummers, right? But one of the coolest things I remember is Josh jamming on this Roland V drum set because it had like the funky sounds mm -hmm. uh, and he would just go through and just play on it. And of course, nothing sounded the way it should have for a 12 inch Tom or whatever. It was mm -hmm. set for the, the pews and all the, the hip hop beats and whatever, yeah. you know, the little tones they had, you know, in the module, basically, you can just have a heyday as a drummer and just, and just run through the pre-programmed stuff that's already built into yeah. those. And I think I just had it on some hip hop, just some random one, right? Did with a kick drum. It was like so an 808 cool. kick, just, you know, boom, you know? Yeah. So I mean, cool though. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll never forget that, which was a lot of fun. And then, um, lo and behold, he's here today. I showed him my Roland V kit. It'd be cool just to get a little, uh, I won't, I don't have to record it, but just, I want to have you maybe climb over the junk in that room and then yeah. check it out later or something. If oh you yeah, want. definitely. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, um, so he's here today and actually drummer wise, he was in a band too, an original band, uh, now Seraph. Yep. Uh, is that correct? Is that yes. the first one you were in for original music? Uh, like no, that? I had been in, you know, multiple original had bands, you? nothing to, I don't want to say the notoriety or anything, but now Seraph had been around probably for close to. I want to say maybe 15 years before oh, I joined before the band. Before you joined them. So yeah. can, I, can, can we backtrack then for myself and for the viewers, though, that are watching, maybe your friends and family that are watching, how did you get started on drums? Because you said 12 years old. Mm -hmm. So yep. can you explain when you got started? What was that inspiration for you? Was it a random gift for Christmas? Explain how you started on drums and where, how it worked its way to your progression of now he's this kick-ass all-around musician, singer, guitar player, drummer. I'm assuming other talents I don't know about, too. Yeah, uh, you know, just it was weird. You know, from a very, very young age, I want to say, you know, kindergarten, you know, six, seven years old, I just knew. Um, I just knew that I listened to music differently than my friends, you know. I would point out things in songs that they just didn't hear. And uh, believe it or not... I had Legos. I used to play with Legos, but instead of actually building things with my Legos, I built drumsticks with my Legos. Nice. And I used the 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 bucket. I, it was a yellow oh, yeah. uh, rectangular bucket that the Legos came I in. Had those. a lid on it. Yeah. I would take the lid off, pour all the Legos out, build me some drumsticks. I broke damn near all of the Legos that were. And this is about I want to say eight nine years old when I started doing this all the way through fifth grade. Um, and I was smart enough at that age that I knew that if I took the lid off of the bucket and set it sideways, that the tone would be, you know, more bassy oh, and yeah. loud yeah. as it would come out of the hole. Cause it's ported. Right, right. Right. And, uh, so I took snare drum in fifth grade. Um, in band, I'm assuming. Yeah. Right. right. Yep. A fifth grade band, which is, you know, pretty much, kind of a joke, you know, when, you know, it's just, it's just to get little kids to get their feet yeah, wet. Exactly. And, uh, so, but I was already, 
I was already playing full fledged songs on this bucket. Believe it or not, I had dude, I had full albums learned. I would play the bass notes and everything, the the kick. I didn't know how to use my feet yet. I just was only good just with my hands. hands. Yeah, yep. And I would literally listen to, you know, one of my favorite albums of all time. I like the Sgt. Pepper's album. I would play that album on that bucket. My dad took a CD and recorded it to a tape because all I had was a tape player. Mm -hmm. And he put Sgt. Pepper's on a tape for me. And I would sit in my room every day after school. It's all I would think about. I would think about Street Fighter, the the video game. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. And I would think about playing my bucket, you know, (laughs) God's honest truth. And I had gotten to the point of where I was showing my dad and my stepmom. I was like, come in here and check this out. Like, I... I wanted to show them that I had this stuff learned and sure. they were kind of like, yeah, it's okay. You know, because it's obviously when little kids are, you know, in the middle of their growth as a musician or anything that they're getting into the beginning of it seems, you know, oh, they might have some talent or, oh, they might do something in the future. But I knew from dude, like six years old, that I was a musician and it's, and it's, it's weird because my whole family plays as I got older, I, cause I wasn't allowed to actually hang out with, um, my dad's side of the family, um, with my grandpa cause him and my dad don't get along. Okay. Turns out my grandpa has been a professional guitar player since like the age of 20. He toured the United States. At one point he was touted as one of the, greatest uh finger pickers in the united states my my grandpa oh wow what kind of music like uh just country and bluegrass okay we're talking we're talking dude he's 80 some odd years old now i believe i mean so this was a long time ago we're talking in the 50s he was already old enough he was playing gigs you know this is before the electric guitar got real big Sure. Um, and then he obviously you know started playing that as well but he's a finger style guitar player an amazing guitar player, dude. My uncle has transcribed his music from tape, my grandpa's music from tape, mm-hmm. and learned it all by ear. And Your can, uncle has. Yes. Yeah. And he can actually play what my grandpa wrote. And I watch, I, I, I get a front view of what my grandpa actually wrote by, by uh, what do you call that, uh, by actually being able to watch my uncle perform the songs and he's like this is what he wrote yeah vicariously yes and i'm watching i'm watching this is stuff my grandpa wrote in the 50s and 60s and it's it it'll challenge a lot of stuff that's out there today just with overall chops i mean the chops so to get back to how i became a musician and a drummer i knew from a very very young age and nobody could tell me anything different man you know It, it was just something that I just loved so much and it was effortless. And so I got a snare drum in uh, fifth grade. Actually, I didn't even, I didn't even get a legit snare drum. I just got a practice pad oh, Okay. and I practiced on that pad. And I was like, this is way cooler than that bucket. Sure. I ended up breaking that bucket, believe it or not. Did I, you? I made sticks out of <laughs> reinforced Legos. <laughs> Dude, no, I use so many things for sticks. I would actually oh, go okay. to the park. I lived by weed park and I would oh, carve yeah. sticks. Yeah. I would take my, I had a Swiss army knife. And I would actually find sticks that were, you know, about the length of, of a drumstick and sure. I would carve them down. And that's what I ended up using on that bucket. And then I was just really into like an Aerosmith song or something. Which one? Dude, I don't remember which one it was. Was it a modern one? No, it was, yeah, well, it was like an 80s, 1980s. Oh, okay. No, it wasn't the, it wasn't the crap that they started coming up with <laughs> post, you know, like, <laughs> Uh, get a grip, Aerosmith Big Ones that's, albums. That's what I'm thinking about, right? Yeah. Yep. It, yeah. It was, it was it was one of those, and I actually made some drumsticks out of. I had an old air hockey table, believe it or not. Yeah. And it had these, um, it had legs on it, but the legs were, you know, it was like you flipped them out like this, just two legs, just for storage and, yeah, reasons and it, or and something. It, well, to set it up. Oh, to, to play s- it. right to set it yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. And so, I just. I ran out of, I didn't have Legos. I mean, I went from using chopsticks, dude. I mean, I would just see what it was like just to have these really light, you know, feeling. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, I, dude, I destroyed everything. That bucket had so many marks on it. But then 
one day I went out there and I just broke with the air hockey table, I think just quit working. So I just okay. decided, well, I'll make use of it somehow. And I snapped off the, the legs to it, which yeah. were made of aluminum, hollow aluminum legs. I, and I took them outside and I snapped them, you know, to right where they're, and I was like beating the shit out of this <laughs> bucket. <laughs> And I was just so into the song, and I just said, screw it. You know, I'm hitting it. And all of a sudden, a little crack appeared. Yeah. And I was, you lost your holy draw. shit, you know? Like, I was scared, man. Like, no. What right. am I going to yeah, do? Yeah. I had that pad, though, but it didn't sound like the bucket, you know? No. Had, well, of course not, because the bucket was probably yay deep or something, Yeah, right? it was about like that. And yeah. then you left the lid half on, so you had a nice little port, and, you know, getting the... And oh yeah, the lid was completely off on the thing. Oh, at that yeah, point, yeah, yeah. So I mean, and I I broke it, and then I I literally remember. Once it was broke, I just said, "Fuck it, this is gonna be, its last song," you know. And I just I dude, I was doing the hi hats with you know my right hand like I would do on a real kit, sure. And with my snare hand, I just man, uh, broke it into like, I want to say like four or five pieces, just beat it up and then i was so sad and i went and i threw it in the trash oh. and, it, and it had served me swear on my life for like five or six years man this was my drum so then fast forward i'm in sixth grade okay and my dad was a single father right so when him and my stepmom weren't getting along, she wouldn't, she'd just take off. She'd be gone, stay in sure. wherever the hell she would stay. Right. And uh, um, we had a lot of babysitters growing up, you know, and they would watch us before school and after school. Well, we go to this babysitter. I go out into her garage one day. I'm in, I think, fifth or sixth grade. And I walk out there, and she's got this beautiful pearl snare drum. Mm. Straight up on the stand and everything, just sitting there. Like, it was, like, meant... Just for, by itself? Just by itself. So, meant for probably ban reasons at school or something? I have no idea. Because she didn't have kids that were that 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 old yet. She had a right, newborn right. at the time. Oh, okay. She was, like, 21. You sure. know, I was, like, you know, 11 or what, 10 or 11, whatever it was. And I would sit out there, and she never bitched once. That was a funny thing. I was like, hey, I'm going to go out and... Uh, play that snare drum. She didn't know that I had been sitting in my room for all these years on this bucket. And I would go out there and I would just play for hours. And my hands, dude, my uh, blisters on my hands were so bad. And I was a little kid and I had these blisters that would, you know, <laughs> horrible blisters on my hands. That's yeah, how serious I was yeah. about it. From a young age, that's what I'm saying. I knew when I was young. And uh, so from there, um, Right around that same time, it was Christmas, and um, I was already playing drums for a church in, in town. Um, they had the most, dude, the worst drum set you've ever seen in your life. Like, it sat in, like, a, like a barn for years, and the paint, literally, the wood itself was just coming off the, the drums, peeling off. cracking yeah. and everything. The laminate was awful. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Probably out of tune, wasn't tightened it was up or anything like no, that. No, no shit. Yeah. And uh, I made, I, I tuned that drum set up and uh, it had one cymbal. It had a, it had a ride cymbal. Oh, yeah. And, and hi-hats. And they were this company called Bosphorus. I'll never forget it. Bosphorus. Right, which is, a, uh, which is, I believe, a part of Turkey. It's a Turkish symbol. The dude from Mudvayne is a Turkish guy as well. He uses all Turkish symbols. I believe they say Turkish on the symbol itself. I was going to say, I feel like Zildjian and um, all these big brands, though, aren't they all from the Middle East somewhere? Uh, I don't know about Zildjian. I just... Zildjian... <laughs> Dude, you got me on that. I, I don't... I feel like they are, though. And I've, I've heard that from another drummer friend before. The Middle East somewhere. I don't know if it's Turkey, but I know that, like, uh, it's... Here, I'll look this up. Keep, but you can keep explaining. Yeah, so the Bosphorus symbol. So it had this Bosphorus ride symbol. It was like a 22-inch ride. And it had, I believe, 14-inch hi-hats. All Bosphorus. And, dude, these symbols sounded amazing. I mean, I used this ride for a crash. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Sure. I would oh, crash yeah. on it, and I would ride on it. <laughs> it was a very, very versatile um, symbol. Um, yeah, Bosphorus. Did you, did you look it up? Uh, yeah, I was just kind of taking a look at a list of drum manufacturers. 
Bosphorus. You see it? Uh, Just type in Bosphorus symbols because it's actually a part of Turkey, I believe. It's it's a it's something out there in the Middle East area. You know, I'm gonna butcher the spelling on here. B O S P H O R U S. There we go. Yeah, Bosphorus. There yep, it is. There you go. Bosphorus. Yes. They sell my guitar center. Uh, Do they really? Because I've I've never seen them there. It looks no. like it. Oh, used. I'm sorry. Used new. Yeah, ones. you can bring them in. Musicians, friends. But they're nice like. ass symbols, dude. I'm I'm telling you, they're not real expensive, and they uh, they just have this amazing tone. Yeah, it's, it's not like a Zildjian or, a, or like a Peisty symbol or a Sabian to where you know that you're getting quality. Yeah, it's kind of like a Bosphorus is like a handmade symbol, definitely hand hammered. Oh yeah, by some dude. Uh, see, look, that guy's. It looks like he's hammering a symbol. And uh, look at these guys. Yeah, they're yeah, all from the Middle fuck, East area. Yeah, look at them. It did say Turkey somewhere I saw in there. Yeah. The uh, I feel like with Zildjian too, though, it's the same kind of thing. It's. I'm not sure about Zildjian because I've never. I never felt like. I needed to like look up Zildjian or whatever because I'm just a huge fan of Zildjian anyway. Well, and they make some of the greatest symbols of all time. That's it, for sure. Well, the thing is, is like with I, I had a friend tell me this. That's the only reason. Yeah, Turkey founded in Istanbul, Turkey. There you go. I feel like a lot of them and Vic Firth is from that same company. And like Sabian Peisty, where is Peisty from? Or Pasty or Peisty? It's, it's pronounced Peisty. I've always called it Pasty, but <laughs> to be to be you know politically correct, I'll just call it Peisty. Right? Yeah. I, I, I'm curious though. I feel like most of these are from the Middle East somewhere. Oh, these are from Russia. No shit, dude. I'm telling you, Pasty symbols are the shit. They are. Well, my man, Danny. It's Carey, li- literally know. the PRS of symbols. Yes. My, in my opinion. Danny Carey. I you know he plays that. The fun thing about Danny Carey from Tool, which uh, I don't know if anybody listens to the tool or not. I know a lot of friends know that that's what I, I really enjoy. The, their drummer actually took um, his old Peisty symbols mm-hmm. and the company melted them down and right. made a drum kit for him out of right, it. Right, right. Out of the symbols itself. Out of the symbols. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I saw that. That was the Lateralis album they made that for and I thought that was the craziest shit ever. That, in my opinion, still one of their best albums, dude, of, for Tool. You listen to the new album, right? Oh, of course. It's, of course. Uh, my friend came over a couple weeks ago, and we sat around and we we listened to that whole album. Um, and there was one particular song on there, and I can't remember the name of the song, but it's so fucking good. It's oh yeah, good, dude. The the polyrhythms going on with the drums. Are you ready? Fucking kidding me? I'm gonna top you off. It's almost like he sounded like he just recorded one part, and then said, "All right, now I'm gonna record another part." But I'm pretty sure it was all done. <laughs> with all four limbs in one take or whatever, however he did oh, it. absolutely. Dude, I, I remember, so I, I've talked about this on a previous podcast, but what I did was when it came out, it was on a Friday. I had no podcast at night, uh, no kids, no girlfriend here. I sat out in my living room, could t- stream the whole thing through my five channel Dolby Atmos, Atmos system with a bottle of scotch. And I was tore the fuck up and loved every <laughs> moment of that. Yeah. So I guess getting off topic, because he's doing a good job of explaining his history and I'm jumping in, but so you, so you started young. Uh, when did you get your first kit though? When so yeah, so I was playing drums for the church, right? And I'm not like a Bible toter and I don't just, pr- I don't press God on anybody, you know, but I believe in God, you know, and I believe in a definitely a life after death and stuff like that. So I was really serious into the church. I played there, it was... I think it was at least twice a week. It was Wednesdays and Sundays. And I had, I had auditioned, basically. And they, all they had was that, that cheap junk drum set. But it had those right. Bosphorus symbols on it. You tuned it up, though, you said, right? Tuned it up. Yep, yep. yep. They had a drum key. And um, they th- thought I was just an amazing drummer, you know? And I was just this little kid. I knew that I could do this thing. I was yeah. not nervous whatsoever. I knew that these songs were nothing compared to the the hardcore Van Halen and stuff that I had, I thought was hardcore, you know, sure, uh, yeah. that I'd already learned on this bucket, believe it or not. And so we went and we, we always had a pr- prayer before uh, band practice, which was on Wednesdays. We'd have practice and then we'd have a uh, student night, which people from the college would come down and basically it was open to the public, but it was mostly for young people. And uh, we prayed 
and they all laid hands on me, the whole band. We had like maybe six or seven people in the band, and they all laid hands on me, and they prayed for me to get a drum set. This is what happened. And this was like, I believe it was summertime. I remember it being warmer out. And come that Christmas, dude, just caught me so far off guard, you know. My mom, I'm at my mom's house for her Christmas. She goes, hey, I need you to run down to the neighbor's house and get a turkey pan. She's got a turkey pan for because we're going to make a turkey for Christmas, sure. which I totally believed. <laughs> so I, I get my shoes on. I run down the alley to like three or four houses away. Yeah. She had the turkey. Her name was Rose, and she's the nicest lady. Oh. Right, right. <laughs> she hands me the turkey pan, and I'm walking back home like, you know, like nothing, you know, this, okay, I got the turkey pan, gonna eat. I have, I know I'm gonna get some presents for Christmas, I don't know what, you know, obviously, sure, yeah. I get in the fucking house, dude, I take off my shoes, and I just so happen to look back, like, and I see this brand new drum set in the <laughs> living room, I swear to God, this is a true story, did they set it up while you went up the they, road then, I yeah. swear to God they did, yeah. they, they, they made me leave so my mom could... She had it hidden in her room, apparently, for quite some time oh. under a, a sheet or something. Yeah. She wouldn't allow me into her room or anything. Sure, I never yeah. really went in there that much anyway, but right, you know, she would keep her door shut and shit like that. And, and I come out and, dude, uh, uh, her favorite color too, green. It was a forest green PV International Series five-piece drum set. Five, two, nine. It was a five piece. Nice. It was just a straight up, just a basic drum set, man. But five instead of four? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The four is cool, too. You know, I'm down for it. I, dude, one snare, a hi hat, and a kick drum is, I'm cool with that, you know? Like, but the more the better, though, with drums for me. The more cymbals, the more drum. I can't get enough, you know? <laughs> of course. Of, yeah. of cymbals. Uh, if I could have Neil Peart's drum set, dude, pretty sure most drummers agree. But that was it, and I believe I was like 12 years old. And was that the best day of your life? It was one of the best days of my life. I mean, besides your kids being born, and, you know, yeah. or your kid At, child up, being up born. to that time, it was yeah. easily the best day of my life. Yeah. And I instantly, apparently, my mom had uh, took to uh, trying to tune the damn thing. Well, like she they tried. They had showed her at the music uh, store. It was yeah. she bought it from Griggs Music, by the oh, way. Oh yeah. Up well, in Davenport. Oh, in Davenport. Okay. Right, yeah. and so. When I played the drums, dude, they were tightened so tight. Like, they were just ready to ding. break. It ding. was, dong, dong, dong. <laughs> you know, even my lowest, my lowest Tom was like, dong. You know, I was, uh, but I knew right then and there that it's on now. You know what I mean? And I instantly had my mom take me, because I obviously wasn't near old enough to drive. She brought me to the church, and I replace that drum set that was there at the church. Oh, you brought it over to the I church? I brought it to the church right away because I knew. Cool. Very and cool. Dude. That's where you're going to be practicing and performing? Yes, that's yeah. where my most of my drum playing is done, if not all of it at the time. And so brought the drum set there, and it just, man, it just looked like this shining, uh, just, sp it was like a spiritual moment for me. Not even because I was in a church, but I just, right, yeah. I just. Well, they knew. prayed. You said right. they prayed, dude. And I promise you, after I put that drum set in there, they were all like, "It worked." The prayer worked, and they were all like, "We were high fiving and everything." And I literally, on a Sunday, like maybe a couple weeks after I put that drum set in there, I got up and gave a testimony. I was this little kid, man, and I told him that story. The whole church, oh, I told that man, story, nice. and they all. They all were like sighing and laughing with me. And I said, I prayed for it. And look at that. There it is. And dude, most of the time for Christmas, I was always a little bit aware of what I was going to get for Christmas. You know, kind of like I'd you been telling my mom. Through the year, like, yeah, you know, yeah, you right. Know. Yeah, they, it was right. new bike, or, you know. Or... Do you remember back in the day, too, not to come in front of your story, remember like the JCPenney big catalogs? Yes. Did you ever see those? Oh, yeah, of course. They don't do that shit anymore. Oh, I believe my dad, my dad would get Finger Hut. I don't know if you're familiar with Finger not, Hut. No. It's, a, it's a fucking magazine. I don't know where it came from, but Finger Hut was a huge thing that he got, and they always had like these cheap-ass little Strat copy guitars oh, in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they yep. have... Little uh, knockoffs. They'd have these little drum sets in there, too, like first act style, you know, mm -hmm. like just the cheap as it gets. Walmart brand stuff. Basically. And yeah. um, 
I feel like I'm just rambling on, but uh, no, you're fine. Um, so yeah, I get, I got up as a little kid and I gave a testimony to the church, and I developed my chops in that church. That's that's what happened. I Which played, church was this again? This was Living Waters. Where's that at again? That is actually off Park Avenue. If you take Park Avenue, uh, right before it turns into 38, you'll take a quick left where you would go into Krieger's. You know what I'm saying? There's a left turn right there like after that just to the left yeah you right? just keep you just keep going straight so my youngest kid actually went to preschool there we're at living waters i don't know if it was called if it's called that when he went there to preschool but it's yeah. that church just past the toyota dealership now up to the left there yeah 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 he went to preschool there uh there's there's you're not talking about the one off 38 though right right as it turns oh, into 38 what color well, was the church do you remember fuck, i don't know man it's the one that's just past when you when you get past the intersection where krieger's is there then the road that goes old 38. And yeah, then, right, right. Is it the old 38? It's 30 the old 38. Never mind. I'm so talking about the one on... You're talking about Shepherd's Cross. That's the one I'm talking about. Sorry. it's the, That's where Tommy went to, to preschool. Totally cool. Everybody, anytime I would tell somebody like a similar story about that, they would always say that too. It's next to Peach Tree. Yeah, yeah. Peach. What's that road? Yeah. Pear Tree and Peach Tree. Yes. Yeah. I know exactly where you're talking about. So you're talking about Living Waters in because that's it's right next to... I mean, literally, peach tree and pear tree are right off to the side of the that, church. That's what I'm saying. So I remember now where you're talking about it, But at first, though, I thought maybe it was that where my kid went to preschool. Anyway, so mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun fact. That's the church. About that when you're done, too. I've got a story about something I did right outside that church. Uh, hilarious. I actually set my drums up outside that church <clears> before. That was my very first time ever playing outside. And I realized that playing outside is very, very cool. <laughs> Uh, you can play as loud as you want. Mm -hmm. There's not the sound is not bouncing off anything. You know the, the sound. Let the, is, let the sound guy worry about the rest of it. Right, right. It wasn't even a sound guy. We just had set up, dude. Oh, like okay. brought the amps out there. And we weren't playing a show or nothing. We were just. It was just like we were experimenting what it was like. Oh, just jamming. to be outside. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, that dude, I was blessed from a very very young age. When I <clears throat> when I was in that band, everybody in that fucking band was very very talented. Our singers were amazing, dude. Their harmonies. Our piano player, uh, grand piano. He played a grand piano. Um, he took lessons from, actually, believe it or not, the music teacher from here in Durant. Uh, T Tom Lee was his name. Oh, okay. And he was the he was the music teacher for uh, the school oh, here in Durant. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, for like 30 or 40 years or something like that. He just retired. He was the guy that taught. He was actually the real leader of the church uh, as far as... The music went, and he taught the son of the pastor, my friend Ethan, who I love dearly, this guy. Um, this guy was just an amazing, he still is, an amazing singer, an amazing, uh, just musical genius, in my opinion. Now, when you talk to him, no. He's very humble. Um, but I would, dude, he's fucking good. Trust me. Yeah. Everybody in that band, the bass player, the guitar player, I mean... I was just surrounded from a very young age of people that were fucking good. And that's yeah. how I morphed into, that's how I knew that I, if I can do this when I was that young, I knew that when I got older, this was something that, this is what I was good at, you know? Like I, I was not very good at a lot of things in my life, you know? I wasn't good at basketball. I tried basketball. I wasn't good at, I was, I was really athletic. I just wasn't good at basketball or football. I was too small for football. Wasn't tall yeah. enough for basketball. Sure. Um, music was just so non-invasive, you know what I mean? To sure. you know, to the body, it's just it's it's all done with the mind, and it's and muscle memory helps. Muscle memory, you know, but uh, <laughs> but it's it's a mental thing. You're thinking about music constantly, you know. As a musician, you know how it is, man. Music is running through. You probably wake up with music in your head all the time. I surround myself with it all the time. It's everywhere. It's you can't get everywhere. away from it. Everywhere, exactly. You can't get away from it as a musician. Mm -mm, so. Mm -mm. This, uh, what is this again? This is a Balvini 12-year double wood. Um, and this is a fantastic single malt scotch if you're just especially starting out getting into scotches. Yeah, show it off. You get closer. It's a wide-angle lens. You can get close. There you go. <laughs> that stuff is, that good? Stuff is really, really, yeah. really good. <laughs> Amazing. I'm this, is the best. this is the smoothest whiskey i've ever had in my life i'm glad you enjoy it mm -hmm. i usually like to have guests try it if they haven't really drank a lot or at all because it's one of those that i know they're gonna love it's so good i had a, a couple of people in the past too uh buy 
a few bottles after that too. So it's so, so damn good. So good. So good. So good. Yes. Um, well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. And it's, it's fun to hear his story because again, when I met him, the story that I, or, you know, I, what I knew him as was a, like a, like a drummer first. Right. Mm -hmm. It's funny because earlier it's the same kind of thing back and forth, believe it or not. So earlier I played a little song before we started recording too, which I may or may not publish. I don't know. Probably not. Maybe on, maybe not for the podcast, just for in general, but he goes, I've never heard you sing. Or what did you say earlier? I can't remember what you said. I said, you've come a long way and you're singing. Because back in the day, I'd never heard you sing. Yeah. Ever. I mean, it's like one of those things that I almost forced myself to do. And because in my cover band, Blackout, or first it was Autumn Falls and then mm -hmm. Blackout. And it's like, it, I got tired of, you know, just kind of being stagnant when nothing was going on. Like there was, everybody right. has personal lives and shit. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, fuck. I'm just going to go ahead and start singing too. Better start <laughs> practicing this singing shit, you know? And then I'll just do my own solo acoustic thing on the side. And, and it's great. Just it's to fill time, great. right? It's that's, really good. That's all it is. But the thing is like for him, so I, I know him as a drummer, but also hearing him sing really, I mean, I've heard, I think I've heard or heard a recording or something of you doing something in the past, but then just seeing him in person here in the, the office and recording that it was so cool because he's got a great voice and, and again knowing you as a drummer but mm -hmm. now i already knew he played guitar really well now he's a singer so what don't you do then well i play bass as well so i do all the bass tracks on my on my solo stuff okay you know? so yeah. the, the music i forgot to bring you um that's all right and if, so by the way and not to cut in front of him he was going to bring me music he will get it to me i will share the link when this gets published link down below but uh yeah so like the reason why that i play i play all the all the instruments on my on my own stuff right. the reason why i do that is because i have to have the song sound like it sounds in my head you know what i mean like sure. stuff that I, I go to bed at night and i can't even sleep because there was a song that i had in my head for about six years that finally one day i got to the studio and i told my my friend producer if you will i mean he he did produce the album he's amazing at what he does he's also a fantastic musician as well we differ on so much stuff though because i'm so anal and uh i had had this song for six years and it's in the key of g major you know i strummed a g major and he was like what the fuck are you doing right now <laughs> you know come on dude g major most boring you know he thought it was going to be some boring shit and i and i told him i said look i've had this song in my head for six years hear me out on this i think i cut the uh rhythm track just one time through like four minute metro to a metronome for, for yeah, like four minutes sure. yeah. cut it cut it down because i wanted there to be i mean i could have copied i could have played it once and then copied and pasted it but it would have sounded so robotic so i so just do the whole thing yeah. yeah you know you can hear slight discrepancies in the picking patterns and Very it just cool. it just a little adds a little dynamics to it and i had this solo written for this for this song and uh it came off so good man uh i i actually played it on his he has an ibanez it was made of uh uh basswood it was the body you're talking about uh, acoustic or electric acoustic electric okay. basswood body with a uh it's one of those a, art with, wood ones dude exotic wood or whatever yeah yeah it's an exotic wood uh, Ibanez, um, basswood body with the, uh, maple neck and, uh, maple neck, rosewood, ebony fretboard. Okay. So it had some really cool woods to it. And I, I always dug the sound of that guitar anyways. It's, it's super nice ass Ibanez. I don't care what anybody says about Ibanez. If you diss on, uh, their, their acoustics and their electrics are all sick for the money. Pretty damn awesome. I've played many Ibanez over the years and had friends who actually, a uh, friend of mine, remember you asked about that picture, uh, mm -hmm. the gentleman, um, Barry Lefevre, name dropping my friend Barry. Uh, he actually owned one of those exotic wood Ibanezes, and he loved it. He thought it was great. I yeah. thought it was cool. Yeah. I thought it was cool, too. Um, yeah, so nothing against Ibanez. I buy an Ibanez before I buy a Gibson Les Paul. Just, just <laughs> blows me away. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Flat out well, blows no, me away. Well, no, not really, but I just want to give him shit. So. Right, right. Yeah. Flat out blows me away. Yeah. If that were the truth, I'd be like, dude, you're so full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, you know, I cut that track on an Ibanez and t I do all my shit to a metronome. I don't do yeah. live. He's a drummer. Of course he does to a metronome. I don't do live 
fucking anything, you know? Yeah. I mean, if it's, if I'm recording it, and this is for my solo shit. This isn't for like the other bands that I've recorded for. Like the first time, my first studio experience ever was with Corporate Rock with Brad Brinney. That was oh, the first, geez. and I was. You played with Corporate Rock too? Yeah, for wow. for like five or six years. How the fuck man. did I not know that? Yeah, yeah. So that was like my first, that was my first bar gig. It was in 2003 at Scott Shovelhead Shed up in Davenport. I was 17 years old. Oh my God. I didn't 2003. Even, you yeah. may have told me this, but I forgot all about that. You played for corporate rock. Yeah. 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 I was in that band for years, man. Years and years. Um, I, it was how I built up. It's how I got used to playing in front of people like every weekend or every two weeks, whatever it was. A lot of times we, dude, we did three shows in one day in they corporate play, rock. Play a lot. Yeah. We, we played a battle of the bands. We got first place. Uh, this was at Leclerc tug fest. I was like 18. We got first place. I did a drum solo. Brad Rennie did his little uh, guitar uh, solo behind his head. I mean, just murder, the sure, guitar, just yeah. shredding out behind his head. I thought that was so cool when I was 18. Nowadays, sure. I just look at it like that's the gayest thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, but, Hendri uh, when Hendrix said it, it was cool. You know? <laughs> yeah. like, like <laughs> or 50, Stevie Ray Vaughan. 50 years ago, it was Stevie cool. Stevie Ray Vaughan or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Stevie Ray. I mean, we're talking like true legends. But uh, right. it was cool. And, and and that's what pretty much won us the, the Battle of Bands. Um, then we got to open up for the, the main headliner that night. I don't even remember the name of that band, but they had a lot of followers. I mean, there was a... On a on a big stage, a cool. lot of people there, cool. a lot of hundreds and hundreds of people were there, and uh, we got to open up for them. I think we only played for like, I want to say a half hour. I think I got paid a hundred bucks for that. So a half set, one set, one set, one ish, half half set, three quarters of a set. Yeah, we, it might have been like five songs, four or five. Ugh. But but it we was got cool. To play, though. Yeah, we got to play, Exposure. and there was a shitload of people there. Um, and then so. The Battle of the Band show, mm -hmm. then opening for that band like a couple hours later. Then later that night, we did a four-hour gig at, at Mount Street Landing nice. um, and got paid another $100 for that. I got paid 100 bucks. I, I know that's what I made. So in one day, I think I made like 250 bucks or some shit like that. Playing music? Yeah, I was, yeah. and I was young. I was like 18, dude. Oh, yeah. So I was thinking to myself, you know, this music thing is pretty <laughs> fucking cool. <laughs> Are you still playing the same PV kit? <laughs> yeah right no no actually i i uh it was a pv kit Your yeah mom i sold it. it the green yeah, one yeah i sold it sold okay. that kit yep all right believe it or not i sold it to music around and um um that i had the the new kit that i got which is a, a everybody likes to call it tama but i call it tama 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 kit tama yeah uh just a cheap ass swing star kit but i i decked it out with the highest hardware uh that you could have you know like i had the i had the 7000 I, I had multiple double bass pedals I, I started off with a gibraltar strap drive double bass pedal okay. and then i i had the um after that i got the d or uh, the pearl demon drive wasn't a huge fan of the demon those. drive yeah. there's a lot of guys nowadays that still use the demon drive great double bass pedal in their eyes for me i didn't like it so i got the dw 7000 double chain drive that it was a workhorse. I mean, dude, I could go so fast. And I could just sustain a double bass lick without my legs fatiguing, which mm -hmm. was which is huge mm -hmm. for me because when you're playing like aggressive metal or whatever mm -hmm. you're playing, I don't care what you're playing. You could be playing mm -hmm. country music. And if you're starting to fatigue on stage, it, 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 it does stuff to your playing. You know, like you can't sustain professional playing if, if your body is fatiguing out can i ask you a question really quick yeah do you play uh drums uh do you play with or without shoes oh with shoes for sure people that do the whole no shoe thing yeah just curious i don't know anything about it just curious. that's their thing some of them, my favorite drummers i've seen i think uh if I'm not mistaken, I think Max Weinberg from Conan O'Brien. Can you look that up real quick? Well, Max, I mean, he plays with Bruce Springsteen, too. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure he's a no-shoe guy. Really? Either him or it's uh, it's Quest Love, one of those guys. What about, uh, what about his son? Dude, Jay Weinberg? Saw I, him. I didn't, I did not. Obviously, yeah, I'm, I'm a huge Joey Jordison fan, okay? Um, I'm never going to say that Jay Weinberg is above Joey at all. I understand. He is pretty good, though. He just got 
voted the number one he best metal did. drummer in, did you uh, see the pictures of when some shit like max that. introduced him to the band when he was a kid yeah and, and then, then and then 20 <laughs> years later or whatever <laughs> yeah. it's like him he's in slipknot now <laughs> they did like a meme about it and stuff. Yeah, yeah yeah i saw that that was amazing dude <laughs> how cool is that though how that's fucking cool. cool is that i mean that's th think yeah think about it because you're like your idols and then someday you play for them that shit i mean and he he dude uh, how cool is that? Just to, he said that he he had predicted it in his own mind. He was a self fulfilled prophecy and all this shit. Like he had, he had thought that this was gonna happen. That's what Jay said. Yes, and then it was, and then it fucking happened. You know. So, I don't know if I'm Google searching this just correctly. Image. Where's the images at? Just oh, go just to image. Google Images. Just go with Max Wine Wine yeah. drumming. No, no shoes. Oh, yeah, okay. you got it. All right. Pretty sure he's a no shoe guy. I know some are, and it's funny though. You, you look at it the other way. So I know some people, uh, some of my favorite drummers, like I love Chris Adler, the ex or the ex drummer from Lamb of God. Yeah, he just he plays, recently quit too. He plays fucking. We got fired technically. He Is plays that what fucking military boots. He's doing these he's fucking crazy, dude. He's doing shit that people can't do. You know with. He's doing crazy stuff. The with people can't do in running shoes. He's doing in fucking straight up combat boots. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, I don't know if they're strictly combat boots, but they're like, I've seen videos. They're like boots. I mean, they're, they're laced legitimate. up legitimate boots, boots. And it's like a lot of weight on them. Oh, fuck. Maybe the weight helps. I don't know. I think a guy like that with the chops that he has, I'm pretty sure he could just wear high heels and fucking murder that shit. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? I remember watching a video before back in the day and, and then uh, they were like, yeah, Chris does most stuff with one foot that people can't do with two feet. It was, it was kind of funny. Anyway, so w we were talking about, I was asking, do you play with shoes or not shoes? And I'm you, a shoe guy. You're a shoe time. guy. Big time. Are they specific shoes or just uh, any kind of shoes? Actually, actually, no, I've never, I've never had like a pair of dr shoes that specifically I use for drumming. Um, I've always thought about it though. Like I'm just going to buy a pair of, because in reality, flat you want like a flat footed shoe, is more like a, is? like a Vans, like a skateboarding type oh, of shoe. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yep. what you really want for drumming. Okay. Something really light. Um, like a Chuck Taylor? Yeah. There's a lot of great drummers that use those. I've never been a fan. Um, you know, like uh, one of my favorite drummers of all time, dude, if you've never heard of him, Thomas Lang. <laughs> it sounds familiar. Who did he drum for? Uh, he's, man, he's, he's from, uh, he's like a, I think he's from Austria. Um, I, he's never drummed, I don't believe, with any like uber famous bands. I know he tried out for Dream Theater. Um, I thought that they should have given it to him as far as Instead I thought I thought he won the audition. Instead of Mangini, huh? I love Mangini. Yeah. I, I mean, I fucking love Mangini, but um, as far as chops go, no doubt in my mind, fucking uh, Virgil Donati was the, was the highest level drummer that they had. Other people would disagree. Everybody has their own opinion. I'm a huge Thomas Lang. Did I say Virgil Donati? You, just a moment ago you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Thomas Lang, though. Yeah, yeah. Vir just... Virgil Donati is, is another great drummer that they had. So is this Lang guy just basically doing session work all over the uh, place? Oh, he's a big clinic guy. Clinic he, guy, okay. Yeah, yeah. So he literally gets paid to... He does most of his clinics in Europe, you know? And he goes around and he, on a roll and V drums, he, he brings that in and he'll have his acoustic set. Dude, you can pull up any drum solo from this guy. It's fucking nuts. His polyrhythms are insane. Like he'll do he'll do things with his feet. So he'll like with his hands, he'll go and it's going to sound stupid over the mic, but he'll go and his his feet will be doing the exact opposite. So while he's going his feet are going you know, you know, so, and as yeah, his hands get exactly. faster, his yeah, feet yeah. will get slower and then it'll be, that's crazy. That's control. Control out the ass. Isn't it? I mean, I mean yeah. how, else, how, else, how else would you describe that? I would describe that with just pure, uh, genetics <laughs> like <laughs> like i don't know where he got this uh from but you can there's a lot of guys out there that have been playing for 30 years they couldn't sure. even they, they can't even fathom a lot of the stuff this guy does he's not my favorite drummer of all time i mean uh tony royster jr huge in my book um there's another guy his name's eric moore um he's a 
he he's a session guy, so he he's a hired gun. I love these hired gun drummers. It's like Josh Freeze. Exactly. Josh Freeze is drum for everybody. Absolutely amazing though. Drum for everybody. But different when I, genres and everything, yeah. Exactly. Um I'm into the session guys, so the guys are these hired guns, you know. They they can just apply their musical knowledge to just anything. Oh yeah. That Absolutely. shit blows me away. Cheer, it, cheers, by the way. We cheers. Haven't cheers yet. Yes. We're, we're due for another cheers. But yeah. My favorite session drummer is Josh Freeze. Here's the reason why. And his uh, dad or his grandpa grew up drumming in Disney. And that's where he grew up in Florida. Uh-huh. Surrounded by famous uh, parent, grandparent drummers for Disney. And then he ended up, you know, drumming for... He's drummed... If you looked at his Wikipedia, dude, he's drummed for not only on albums for countless musicians, but t- live touring for mm-hmm. countless musicians in different genres. So Josh Freeze is the only one I would recommend to check out if you haven't seen what he has done. I haven't seen anything outside of, of you know, the Pumpkins. I mean... Well, and he didn't really... He may have helped on the Pumpkins, but Jimmy Chamberlain is the, the man for, for the Pumpkins. So like... Earlier, when we did some we did some songs recordings, I did uh, my favorite one of my favorite pumpkin songs. Not my probably not my favorite, but the one I can play and you know pull off is tonight tonight. Jimmy Chamberlain and his style, incredible from guy from Chicago. Um, but no no no, Josh Freeze. I think of him when I first saw Josh Freeze live. Uh, Perfect Circle, original drummer, uh, touring drummer for Nine Inch Nails. Saw them multiple times too, as well as Perfect Circle. Um, he's drummed recently for big acts like uh, Weezer, Sublime with Rome, Sting. Um, you know all these. I love Sting, by the way. Yeah, I'm a huge Sting fan. So I'm jo- a huge U2 guy as well. Do me a favor, just check out if you've never heard or seen him. Look at Josh Freeze's repertoire because he's the guy that just plays for everybody. Straight up hired gun. Straight up hired gun. Plays for everybody in the studio. Tours with. I them. love hired guns. Hey, you got some fucking reggae, fucking ska shit. Done. I'm there. Puts the you know the look on and everything. Sting. He's been touring with Sting's worldwide tour, and he shows on Instagram like these videos and the. And again, I told. I told Josh earlier when we're when we're out in the my drum room, I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't really play it very much, and I, I love getting. I watch stuff like this, you know, even guys that aren't technically like um, Portnoy or you mm-hmm. know, or not technically or polyrhythms, but it's just fun to see people that are just good at what they do. Right, right. And it, let me ask you this too, because somebody may say, you may say, my favorite drummer is this, because in my mind. This is what I look for. There's obviously all kinds of great drummers, guitar players, singers, you, you know, whatever. And most people could blow them off as not being important in their life. But what do you look for or see as important to you when you're looking at drummers? When I look at drummers, man, it, I mean, it just comes down to, uh, man, there's so many parameters to what I look for in a drummer, but mostly I look for how do they play with the song, you know? Um, how do they play against the song with how, the song? How, how do they, how do they take the music in and then spit it back out as a, you know, song? How do they hear the song as a drum song in their mm-hmm. mind? And what, mm-hmm. what I'm all, I'm all, I'm all about the, overplaying and I, I i get off on the on the just the murderers of the drum community the guys that just fucking every fill is just perfectly in time i get off on your timing i love timing i love precision i love power i mean straight up i love a power drummer that when you hear that kick it makes you just want to that snare has to be fat i mean um Symbol work is huge with me. Yeah. I mean, I'm not yeah. even huge into double bass. I mean, obviously, I'm a double bass drummer. Depends on the application, of course. Right, right. I mean, but I love a drummer that can just keep in the pocket and just murder the um, the whole... Makes the song what it is. The drummer, really, in a, in a, in a normal, like, blues, rock, country... I don't care what fucking style it is. The drummer is really the one that makes the song what it is because they dictate the timing. They dictate the, uh, the stops. They dictate 
basically how the song is going to go. If the drummer starts playing, you know, something in double time, as you know, as us drummers call it, double and half, you know, and obviously guitar players say the same shit. Um, Fucking guitar players. Right, right. But <laughs> if if he's playing halftime in a spot where it's uncalled for, it right. fucks the whole song up, you know, and the drummer really dictates. If the drummer misses one note and, and does a stutter step of some sort, it fucks the whole thing up, dude. It, the whole band is like looking back like, well then the bass so and then the bass player fucks up after the drummer fucks up and then the guitar player is looking at the bass player like what the fuck did you just do? And the singer's always too drunk anyway to give a fuck. <laughs> so he is. Or he's too busy looking at the lyrics on his phone to even know what's going on anyway. Exactly, right? His little music stand. They don't even use paper anymore. It's a fucking tablet of some sort or a fucking cell phone. Exactly. Which by the way. All the singers of my life, including uh, Mr. Mike Oshner, who's been on the podcast. Great singer. He's a great guy. And then he doesn't really use a, a stand, but I, I give a lot of shit to singers I've been with in the past. Cause I'm like, come on, man. Just just learn it. Just just learn it. It's cheesy. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. It's like if I had, you know, guitar players are probably the same way out there. They probably have a little cheat sheet of chords they're playing. They right, don't. right. I mean, I don't know. I've, you, I've, I've never done that. Let, I've, you let, know, and that's, a, let me ask you because I'm an asshole. Right, right. And a lot of people know that I can be an asshole. So when it comes to things like that, you need to learn, in my opinion, if that's your job, not your job, that's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Is, am I still saying this wrong? That's your, that's pretty much, you know, what that's you're your part. That's what you're that's, supposed to do. That's your part. So if, okay, so let's say you practice at home, you rehearse and find that's, you get to, you know, the gig day and you're there and it's like, you're causing the, the rest of the band to mess up because you're staring at the ground because your lyrics are there or on the stand or it's like on a tablet. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about if you're going to be in a band? And I know recently you had some gigs, you said you, there really wasn't a whole lot of lead time for you, but still... How do you feel about the guys out there that are playing that don't take the time to learn at least to the point where they're not having an eyesore on stage? Personally, for me, now, my brother is a hip-hop artist, Justin Fox, J-A-E. He goes by the stage name. Name drop. J-Fox, J J-A-E-F-O-X. He's against those type of guys uh, that have like, you know, the, the notebook right here in the, right. In the booth. Or like a music stand. I right, right, right. I mean, some stands. of these motherfuckers are just straight holding the notebook like right here and they're, they're all up in the mic and they're How doing this fucking thing. How can you feel it if you're fucking reading a, a notebook? This is the thing. They'll fucking spit, you know, two or three lines out of the verse. They'll stop it and then they'll punch him back in so he can re-record his shit. My brother has been a fucking, a uh, straight up workhorse in the studio. Oh my God. Um, just literally the best. You want to see a professional rapper? Just come hang out with me one day in the studio with my brother. And you're, you're going to see below? somebody. He doesn't even have a YouTube page. Ah, That's the thing. Okay. I don't even have a YouTube page right now. You yeah. should. Yeah. My my uncle, the, the best guitar player in the region, doesn't have uh, a fucking YouTube page. And I, I don't know why. Um, it doesn't matter, though. YouTube does not dictate whether you're a great musician or not. No, whether you not. have a lot of views or subscribers, that doesn't mean shit to me. Exactly, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, what means... I set goals for myself musically all the time. Yeah. Like, I've set goals for me vocally, you know, to be able to... I mean, and I have vocal exercises that I go through, you know? I mean, I do my vocal exercises a lot. And, I, and I've, I've learned from the singers that I've performed with on the drums... I've watched them do their their vocal exercises, and I see what they do now. And one of my bands, my singer did this was this was his vocal thing: sing as low as you possibly can for as long as you can. Really? So it was just. I mean, I'm not gonna do go it here. It. No, it's go just, for it. Ah, and then try to get as loud as you can without without it going sharp or flat. A low tone there. Just, Ah, uh, you know, and try to get if the, the louder you get, the more the more opt your fucking voice is to going sharp over the note, and that's that's what that's what the that's what your muscles are trying to control is just to stay on that fucking perfect note. Sure, yeah, and I mean, dude, and it works wonders. It 
And that's what you do then. Before too, your right? before your next show, when you sing, do that. Swear to God, just try to fucking uh, sing as low as you can, as loud as you can, and don't let it go sharp. Don't let it go flat. Try to just stay on the note. You might hear a little waviness in between. If you do it for just thirty seconds and then you re sing without just one breath. Yes, and you do it you re sing what you were practicing. Like say you're practicing your your vocal. I practice my vocals constantly, bro, every day. Sure. You're gonna be shocked. I mean I've it makes a difference. Yeah. I mean I've I've told multiple people about this. I said a lot of people think that singing loud and high is a good way to stretch your vocal cords out, but in, in reality, singing low and as loud as you can low because it's opening up the the whole uh, vocal cord itself and, it, and it's your nasal uh, passages and your larynx area are all open wide and it's stretching. When you go, ah, you know, like really fucking high, constricts everything. You know, your fucking, your vocal cords are going smaller you know to create right. you know so the air when it goes through it it, it creates a higher note sure. everything just gets constricted right so right. higher notes is not really the way to to really push your vocal in my opinion i'm not a professional vocalist Neither i'm sure am that, I. i'm sure there's fuckers out there that have <laughs> you fuckers out there you know who you're talking <laughs> hey whoever it is <laughs> you know you guys you know you guys still uh, you know, I've come up with just like my own kind of recipe for the way that I like to do it, you know, and, and that, that's the cool thing about music as He's well. Good. It's a cool thing about music as well is that everybody has their own niche in this fucking thing. The way that you play your chords are slightly different than the way I play my of chords, course, yeah. you know, and that's going to be that way for every single person you meet. There's going to be slight fucking differences in the way that they do their thing. And it, that's what I love about music. It's, it, it really is endless and infinite. Even though we've only got... Now, this is, this is some theory, if you will. There's 12 notes. Go for it. There's only 12 notes in sound. I don't give a shit whether um, a spacecraft is shooting off into space and they, they you know put a microphone up to the sound of it and they figure out what note, whatever note that is. There's only 12 notes, dude, in music. There's seven major notes. There's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Mm -hmm. And then in between, they got your sharps or your flats, or your whatever, flats. whatever you want to look at. Right. So there's 12 notes. So, okay, so we have these, you know, if I was to put it on paper, we have 12 notes here. Look at what can be done with just 12 notes, man. A lot. It's infinite. A lot. 12 notes. Oh, my God. If you start mixing them together, causing chords, all these harmonic uh, things happening, scales that are played. I mean, dude, it's music is fucking crazy. That's why they're teaching it in school um, and trying to get kids to be more involved with it is because it really makes the mind have to work really, really hard to kind of, you know, once it becomes easy, you know as well. After all these years of your playing, my half-ass playing, I'm right yeah. there with you, man. Solid as fuck, dude. <laughs> Solid ass player. No, I love your playing. I've loved your playing. I the first time, no. I, and I I remember playing a show with you, man. We played. Oh yeah. We played at the MVP Lounge, but it was it was I think it was now it's Boonies now. It was, it was, yeah. I think it was Tailgaters at the time. Mm. I think it was called Tailgaters, dude. This was like fucking five six years ago. Way back. We played oh, a show. It was longer than that, wasn't it? Eight really? No. Okay. No. YouTube that show? Is no, it on there? Probably Is it on there? I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> if it was, I would love to see my drum solo because I... Fuck. <laughs> Dude, I am telling you, that night, my friend showed up that night and I he stood there and, you know... Justin Welch, you know, he's... Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. I forgot that's how we kind of knew each other, too. That's how, we, that's how we met each other. Is that what it was? Yeah, that's how we God, met each other. He I, came to that show that night. Um, I remember He that wasn't now. in Autumn Falls anymore. I don't even he know if you called Autumn Falls at the time. Were uh, you? You had, you had Clay? What was it? It was Autumn Falls still. Yeah. And... Uh, Corey, I, Corey. 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 Great fucking bass player, dude. Great... Uh, He's like you in the terms of the music, you know, and the we could talk the same topics and things like that. He'd be on board. All great that. backup singer too. I remember listening to his vocals, and he was just very, very um, 
He wanted just to help. Energetic, man. He wanted to help. Yeah. He's a fucking great musician. He is. He's I a didn't fantastic. see anybody. I never saw anybody that you played with that I thought, no, he's kind of iffy. You know, I thought everybody that you played with, and including yourself, were fucking amazing. Oh, I, uh, 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 I, that's how I feel about myself, bro. So, uh, no. Fuck, I'm, I'm always like, uh, <laughs> like drink a few scotches. Uh, yeah, drink a few scotches, and all of a sudden you're like, <laughs> all right, and then thumbs up comes. <laughs> That's right. We did. We, it was you were you were in Nile Seraph at the time. I was. Yes, and then that was at the MVP Lounge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is now Boonies and Muscatine. That was back in the day, yo. That was back in the fucking day, dude. This guy's he's a he's a machine. He's a monster. He he can he can play. That's for sure. And it's it's great to hear somebody else who has an appreciation and understanding. I do not have appreciation and understanding like he does. But it's nice to have somebody that can talk and I can. I'm with you 99% of the time so far, right, which is right, cool. Right, right. Even yeah. though I'm not a drummer, I still love talking drummer stuff because aspirational for me, people like him in the past and going forward, you, I will say, if I had a few drummers friends-wise, it's you, it's uh, Chad Grimm, who I still play with today in Blackout, and he, used, he took over for Barry, the, the, the guy who gave me the... I met and Barry back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah. And then uh, Dave... First time I met you, actually, is when I met Barry. Yep. Is that when you met Barry? Yep. 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 And then Dave Del Monaco. Those are the three people, drummer-wise, in my life. Um, him included, of course, that, you know, it, it's led me to this point where I have a drum kit. Uh, we talked earlier. It's like seeing him play a roll in I'm pretty sure it was a roll in V kit in Des Moines mm -hmm. at that Taylor Roadshow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then, it was 100% Roland V drums, I've got a, for sure. I got a fucking one in my... You know, so it's people like him through my uh, my past that have led me to this point, too. I am not a self-proclaimed badass musician by any means. I do this for the fun of it, like this podcast. It doesn't... <laughs> this podcast, like my music, is fun for me because there's no there's no weight on my shoulders for it. If right, that right. makes sense. There's vodka or not vodka. There's scotch in my <laughs> vodka. There's scotch in my my fucking stomach, which is awesome and good talks with good friends. But um, it, it's and that's what the thing is. I feel like this conversation could just go forever. We haven't even like we haven't even scratched the surface yet. Of, we, like, all anything. we've been talking about is just drumming so far. Which has <laughs> I been, know it's been great, right? I know. I am sorry, but no, don't be <laughs> sorry. Just, apparently, this is how I am. I don't know. This is awesome because it's like. I could keep going on this forever and we could talk like favorite drummers and styles and, you know, discipline, fucking and everything, control and all this kind of stuff. But the one thing I do want to talk about with him as well, um, and we're going to, we're going to keep going on with music too, but so we, we fast forward, right? So mm -hmm. life happens and you know, everybody's busy in life and we find ourselves here today. You today, Mm -hmm. What is you today that's different from you of yesterday when we met? Because we've known each other now, you know, for so when we first met was, like you said, what, like 10, 10 years, years ago, ago? Yep. whatever it was, right? Yep. So what's happened in between now and then? Because you've met millions, not millions. You've met a ton of people. You've, I, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I can only imagine the people you've met in your life musically mm -hmm. and personally. And what, what's different today for you? Um, than what's, what it was different from back then. What's different today, I think, for me, um, it comes down to music has just become, like, I don't want to just, like, make this whole podcast about, like, oh, I'm just a musician and this is all I care about because it's not... So, there's no topic restrictions here. There's so. not the truth, man. Like, but musically, music has become easier over 10 years since we've met each other. Like, back then... Yeah. I was less of a guitar player. I was still a guitar player. Don't get me wrong. I was still, I mean, I was 23. That means I've been playing for 10 years. Right, yeah. Is that when you started, when you were 23? I was, no, I was 13. No, 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 for guitar player. No, 13. It was, I was 13? 12, 12 when I when I got my first drum set. 13 when I was fucking got my first guitar. It's a whole other fucking story. Yeah. Right? Jesus. Yeah, so that the whole way I got my first guitar was a fucking trip too. But uh, no, but I just, I like, since I started way younger than 13 on the bucket, which is true story. The Lego bucket. Right, right, right. Um, I just took to drums like no other. But after these, uh, you know, since we've met, I've, I mean, dude, think about it. We both met when we were in our early 20s, basically. 
Yeah, mid uh, mid twenties. Mid twenties. I was like twenty three. You know. Yeah, yeah. Now we're. You know. <sighs> the next milestone is what the big four zero. We were talking gray hairs and shit like that. Yeah. Earlier. Fuck yes. Which he doesn't have any. Beautiful, I do. Beautiful head of hair. No grays that I can see. <laughs> there's there's grays in there. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't. See <laughs> I promise you there there is, uh, but. I, I just let's just leave it at a musical standpoint. Over the last ten years, musical musically, I've just I never took like a true theory course in music. I never have either. I, I have my own theory on music. I know why you know there's a relative minor to a relative major. Like if you took E major, the chord, what's the relative minor to E major? It's fucking C sharp minor. I mean, and then you just go up a full step from there. So then it's F sharp. Now it's D sharp minor is going to be the fucking relative minor of F sharp major. It's little things like that. Like I just, I listen to the shit so much. Like I just dissect music. Can, I love music. Can I ask you a question and not to cut in front of you what you're saying? Remember when can you I, was, uh, fuck yeah. Dude, I'm going to have to go get more ice. Anyway. Um, fuck yeah, this... That fucking big ass ice cube is getting small now. Fuck yeah. Um, so we were talking earlier. You were in the studio. Keep going, man. You're, we're going to finish. I don't want to keep this bottle. It's I got to get close. More, I got to get more ice. So what I'm going to do, and I don't want to walk away, but I'm going to get more ice for myself and I'll grab a couple of little cubes for you if you want. Cool. Is that, so we talked earlier, you got into the studio and you started this G major song and the guy's like, ah, mm -hmm. oh, what know. the fuck are you doing? Exactly. Yeah. So what I want to know is an earlier off camera, before we started the podcast, I was talking to him about, you know, I'm a sap for these G major, you know, slow. I am too. So I fucking love them. I right? love them too. You know, I yep. love, I love the complex polyrhythms, the, you know, all the crazy metal. I'm a big metal guy at heart, but I'm super huge in the metal. You know what I'm saying? It, it's like, what are your favorite? If you had to give me a top five in the key of G, <laughs> are you gonna put me on the Stop. spot here i am okay me, and we in the last podcast with chad weeks we did a bunch randomly we're just like let's start doing some top fives of whatever and we talk okay. movies right right but right what are your top five key or even if you can't think of top five give me top something key okay. of g yep. songs that you love explain to them why i'm gonna grab an ice cube do you want a couple of little cubes to top it off there oh yeah i mean yep. that's gonna be i'll be right back that's gonna be perfection well um, i mean the G chord is, for me, it's my favorite chord. I mean, it's it's one of the most basic guitar chords, you know. Um, e major, A major, we're talking D major, C, yeah. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. <laughs> they're all, they're all easy chords, you know. Um, it's not about easy, though. It's not about, it's not about are they easy to play or are they this and that. It's about the sound of those chords and how they resonate in your ear. Um, there's so many songs that start off in the key of G that for me to just sit here and be like, Oh, this is my favorite song. I mean, every rose has its thorn is half step down and it's in the key of, it starts off in flat out G motherfucking major. G motherfucking major. And then, and then Brett Michaels, apparently he's the guy that fucking played this, the shit in the studio. This is what, irks me about every rose has its thorn okay when he goes into c9 after the g major he rings out the open e which is a fucking complete it doesn't fit you don't fucking play e while you're playing a c9 because the root note is a c not an e well it just e is not in the scale of c so you can if he played any note inside the scale of, of a c which is literally a minor pentatonic so if he played any note within the inside the a minor pentatonic scale which is the relative minor to c major it would have been perfect but since he played fucking e which obviously 99 percent of the people that listen to the song don't hear it all the musicians that are listening to this right now probably know what the fuck i'm talking about um that song starts off in g half step down you know, so we're talking about uh, F sharp. You know, that's really what the song's in. Of but course. Cheers. Cheers. Fresh ice. This ice is amazing. Is uh, Ice Ice Baby in the key of G? 
So <laughs> under pressure, <laughs> under pressure is. I got you. Dum, dum. Now, Ice Ice Baby actually goes up a full step. So it's. So they add they add a note. I I don't know what I don't know where what key it's in. I've never. Uh, I believe it's. Uh, I believe it's D. I think it's in the key oh. of D, and I think Ice Ice oh. Baby's in the key of E. Pretty sure. Oh shit! Yeah, I just today just, we all learned. <laughs> I'm not. Don't quote me on this fucking shit. I don't know either. That's what I'm asking. I promise you right now. But so Ice Ice Baby just well, brought it up a full step and then added the instead of dum 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 da go dum 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 da go dum they went up dum 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 da go dum 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 da go dum 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 you know. Nowadays, that shit is going on so often with sampling songs and fucking... Oh, oh, I... Uh, fucking vanilla... Preach it. Preach did, it. Did you know that Vanilla Ice had to fucking literally fucking basically go bankrupt over this fucking shit? Yeah, because it was... Oh, uh, he stole... He stole a fucking... Uh, somebody else's idea. That's all fucking... Uh, Hip hop is nowadays stealing other people's shit. Well, I mean, yeah, it's it's a guarantee. I swear on my life, it's a guarantee. Guarantee, open hand gesture. Shit you not. <laughs> he shits you. Listen, not. <laughs> <laughs> don't point. It's rude. <laughs> I always give the peace sign anyway. <laughs> so, did you list off any top? What's your top? I five? can't think of any song that's in the key of G that's like my top song because, like, literally, G is played so often. All right, I'm going to be that guy. Here we go. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm ready. You all sitting down? <laughs> Rodeo by Garth Brooks. What? That song's in G? Are you kidding me? That song's in G? Yeah. Wow. Next song. This is gonna that get song me. doesn't sound like it's in G to me. It may not Pull be. it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. That song's not in the G. The first chord's in G. No. First chord G. Mm-mm. G. A. No, it is. Da dun dun da no. dun dun. Bum, bum. I, dun, I know. Da dun dun. That's E. Da dun dun. Da 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 da. G bum. A. Is it? Is That's it really? It is. And then it goes to what D? No. You want me to play it? No. Yeah, play I can't, that I can't shit. do it now. I can't do it right now. We're on the podcast, man. I can't do that. Uh, All right, fine. Fuck it. Here we go. Ed Madison about to prove me wrong here. <laughs> I'm a half step down right now. Put that cable on the old first fret, baby. And you got a red cable though too. Mine's black. I'm gonna print I'm gonna pretend like I know what I'm doing. Okay. Uh-uh. That's not the no. song. No, because if the, the Garth Brooks His eyes are cold and restless. His eye, e. His eyes are cold and restless. Is he is he an E though? Wounds have almost healed. Pretty sure he's got Capo first fret though, on the on the actual track. Mm. Pull, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. Rodeo. Have did you learn that? Did you learn that to the song? I did. Like the actual song. I'm OCD like you. Huh? Yeah. I'm yeah, you're OCD as hell. Like you. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I don't even want to pull it up then, cause uh, his eyes are cold and restless. His wounds have almost healed. <laughs> And he gave half a taxi Just to change the way he feels bah, 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 He knows his love's in Tulsa She knows he's gonna go Oh, there ain't no woman, flesh and butt, blood I'm no rodeo oh. Oh, It's balls and blood It's the dust and mud It's the cold of us on the crowd bum, bum, dun, e. It's a wide, it's a wide e. in the knuckle Cold in the bubble, here we win the next door to dance. It's blues e. and bands, it's shallow hands, it's a. turning and they let it go. A. I don't know these lyrics and it's on it thing. And they call seven. the thing Rodeo. Something like that, yeah. So, uh, Garth Brooks Rodeo, that was just kind of a joke. Is it really in G, though? I mean, the first chord's G. Dun, dun. Zhung, zhung. It's got so much effect on it, though. Like, it's got that wavy. Wah, 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 wah. It's G. Trust it's, me. I 100% believe you. I'm not going to sit here and argue with EMPP. We can. We can. <laughs> you guys. 
Listen we to can, me. We can podcast argue all we want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here, cheers, cheers to, that. to that. Yeah, exactly. All right. So next, more serious. There's a, there's a lot of emotional songs that really tore my, my, uh, my heartstrings a little bit over the years. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a 90s newer guy. Me so, too. So, you know, we can talk brett michaels and i get all those classics and let's get hey let's I'm, get one thing out of the way i don't mean to interrupt you yes no you're fine the singer that sang uh her name's marie frederickson she died like two days ago she's the must have been life but it's over now it sounds familiar must have been good she but died I lost it somehow yeah she just died dude from uh brain cancer man Dude. She's only 61, dude. She Cancer was hella young. Cancer sucks, man. Cancer's bullshit. But guess what? I'm doing that song in my in my set list. And that's Are you that's really? why yes, and that's why it fucking really affected me, man. It made me really fucking sad. Not going to lie. I posted it on Facebook and I, you know, rest in peace and all this shit and everybody I didn't get I don't even think I even got one fucking like sad face emoji. It's bullshit. Just saying. Because somebody knew it? Is that why you think? Well, she's... Dude. She... Okay, so her and her uh, cohort, which is... A, his name's... Uh, kind of weird. They're f- both from, like, uh, Scandinavia area. Uh, I want to say his name is uh, Pierce... So, something, something weird. You could pull it up so quick. Uh, gray guitar player, dude. Just type in rock set. Rock set? Yes. R O X E T T E. Roxette singer? Just Roxette. Just type in Roxette. I want to get his name as well. His name is Pierce something. Yes, Roxette, man. Oh, uh, Pierre Gil- Gessel? Yes, yes. Pierre Gessel, dude. And then. Pierre, Pierre, Pierre Gessel. Yes. Dude, and if you want to hear some of the most fucking intricate... Swedish pop star? Yes. Pop rock. Dude, she just died, dude. Dude. One of my favorite singers of all time, dude. Look, past, past members. like They've already got it on past members on the bottom. Marie Fredrickson, deceased. And that was like three days ago. She died. Damn, that sucks, man. Yeah. Dude, and he's one of the best guitar players. Like, underrated as fuck. You know how many fucking hits they have, dude? I don't, I don't know. Dude. Something they, to check out be, later. They've but. done songs for so many fucking movies, it's not even funny. Well, it, it's like, you know, in most of these podcasts, I learn shit, and I'm, like, checking them out afterwards, so... For sure. Dude, but her voice is, like, what rings in my head, dude. I mean, it, it, dude, when I was in preschool, yeah, her voice was in my head. I swear to God. I used to have this song in my head, and I, I, it was called, uh... I think it was called uh, Hideaway or something like that. It's like... Every time I see you when I try to hide away when I went to meet him when we didn't let go I don't I don't remember what it was something deep to that effect and I would be in preschool like drinking my apple juice eating my <laughs> eating sipping my fucking apple juice dude and like literally eating my my, my little my little uh I don't know what they fed me some some straight bullshit let's put it that way back in the day and that woman's voice rang through my head. So once social media came out, I decided to take it upon myself to actually search, what is her real name? What is this woman? What is her real name? Marie Fredrickson. Changed my life, dude. From, from a very, very young age. And, dude, I think she'll change your life, too, if you just listen to her songs. I'll check it out. Amazing shit. Here's the thing. I'm always open to new music. But I just gotta, I need to hear it, you know? I'll check it out. 100%. You're into love songs like me. I am. Okay. So, okay. So if we move forward then, uh, love songs are usually the ones that are the G's, the, 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 and the, the A G's. majors, the, the A G's, ma- the G's, <laughs> anything that's not <laughs> augmented and diminished. <laughs> Musician talk. I don't mm-hmm. understand it. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just making shit up. Uh, again, nineties and newer. I think of, uh, blue October hate me. I think to of, use the restroom up in here, man. I, I've seen a couple times on here. I was like, Oh, he's got to use the restroom, but people don't understand. We're like, we're, look at this. We're going we're, through we're, the, we're, we're like <laughs> three quarters of a way through a fucking whole bottle of whiskey. We here. may or may not have have something to drink before we started this podcast too. Maybe just to, 
just calm to, the nerves, just to calm it down a little bit. He did. I didn't. He's a, he's a, yeah, he kept it, you know, sober. Are you going out? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to keep going with my songs. So if I had to go with a few songs, the first one jokingly was, uh, Garth Brooks rodeo. No, 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 no. The next one I would, I would have to say when it comes to G God, it would have to be blue October. Hate me. The reason why that song is, is so powerful because you know, when you first hear that song, you think that, okay, the dude's got issues. He's got issues and he fucked with somebody along the way. I don't know if it was a girlfriend or a mom or upset somebody, but basically um, what happened was you get this great, incredible song, heartfelt song in the key of G. Um, so if you've never heard that song, or you're not a fan of Lou October, definitely check them out. It, it, it's, it, I always look at that band as a, a three song there's three songs that build up to what is, what is a story. So when you, when you hear stories, you think, uh, with bands, you know, you hear a song. I feel like there's a three part song with blue October. It's going to be, um, the, the song starts. The first one is, um, calling you is the first one. There's something that I can't quite explain. I'm so in love with you. You never take that away. And if I said a hundred times before, expect a thousand more. You never take that away. So that's like the first song. And then the next song, and that's not in the key of G. The next song so you've got this love of your life. The next song with Blue October is Hate Me. I feel like in this three part, you know, of songs. And the next song is I have to block out thoughts of you so I don't lose my head. They're crawling like a cockroach, leaving babies in my head. Dropping little reels of tape. So this is in the key of G. So it's kind of like you love somebody, you know, you lost somebody. And then the, the final song is um, I Hope You're Happy, which is kind of like the send off of, okay, we've, we've loved, we've lost, and then it's acceptance. And, and this is it. So Blue October, you got to check these guys out if you've never heard of them before. You've probably heard Hate Me, but the ones that came before and the one that came after Calling You and I Hope You're Happy are two really incredible songs too. So... Those are ones that I would definitely recommend for sure to check out. Okay, so the next part is of this is like, okay, we talk about songs in the key of G. You may not realize this, but a lot of songs are in the key of G. Key of G is definitely, if I had Josh here, I would talk to him and say, hey, you know, what makes a key of G song? Is it, is it, the, is it a, th a four chord, three chord wonder? what what is that right so what is a g chord love song is it uh is it always going to be slow and steady paced or is it going to be something that's maybe uh you know starts off a little fast paced but then you come to realization the funny thing is i played you know and I, I was thinking what makes and josh is kind of passing in and out here um I was going to ask him when he gets back here, what makes a good G chord song? So, you know, if it's a half step down, technically it's not G. So I played like uh, Smashing Pumpkins technically starts in a half step down and G chord is the first, you know, chord you play, right? Right. So well, that uh, technically not a G chord song, right? Right, right. But... I mean, it's not in the key of G, right? Is that what you're saying? Or? Right, because it's a half step down, but the first chord is G. G. Dun, 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 right, right. Dun, dun. So what I what I what I depict of a song, uh, the key of the song is the most dominant chord in the whole song. So if the song not what it starts with, star no, that's not what the key of the song is. So I, I would have fucked up then with rodeo because technically rodeo starts with G, but E is the, the the dominant chord in that song. So if if you're getting back to what we talked about earlier, with, right, right. So it, maybe technically rodeo is an E, not G, but G is the first chord of the song. That's what popped in my head when we were talking G chord songs. Anyway, mm -hmm. go for it. What were you gonna say? Uh yeah. So 
when a song, um, you know, you hear, I've played with a lot of musicians that don't like straight understand That's like, me. what the key That's me. of the song is in. So when you, when you, when you're playing a song, a lot of times when you look at like a list of songs that you're trying to learn yeah. as a guitar player, um, they will list the name of the song and then they'll just put the key that the song starts off in, you know, at, at, on like a set list. Yeah. Yeah. Like a set list. I always put the tuning, the songs. In. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you always have to put like, Oh, this one's half step or this one's in drop D or, EB whatever. or whatever. I do. EB, it is. I do flats instead of sharps, but yeah, I, I I'm, I'm a huge, uh, I, I'm a huge into both. So you do both. If, yeah. Yeah. So if the songs in, I, I never say G flat, you know, I say F sharp for sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that's something that everybody has their own like sort of take on how, um, the song, you know, what key the song's in, but re in reality, and it, this is not like a theoretical thing. I'm not, you know, I didn't go to college for this shit. I just go by my own ear and so the key of the song is definitely the most dominant chord in the song so if you're playing a song that has c major like uh unchained melody from the righteous brothers which is uh the key of that song is in c c major you know oh Okay. My yeah. darling, you know, C major. It's it starts off in C, and it goes, you know, and when it hits a hunger for, that's he's hitting G on that part. But would G be the fucking key of that song? Hell to the fuck no. The the key of the song is in C because, because, because C is the most is the most prominent fucking chord of the song, and that's how you figure out the key of a song. Whatever whatever song. Um, uh, that you're listening to and you find that there's a chord that just really is the driving force of that song. That's what the key of the song is in. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not theoretical about it because there's dudes out there that will say, well, when you go to a minor though, it kind of mixes with the other songs. It would make it now the key of F, you know, I've heard I've heard guys tell me that sort of thing, but that's never worked for me. That's never worked for me as far as figuring out the key to a song. I've always just kind of listened to the song, um, figure out the verses. The bridge is always something different than a verse or a chorus. The bridge is always like usually a full step up or a half step down from... You know, they go into some weird shit, you know, that, that throws you off and then it makes your mind think harder um, as to what is going on musically. Um, and, um, yeah, my advice for any, you know, musician that is trying to learn the key of a song is to think about what, key, uh, what chord is being played the most throughout that song. What chord resonates throughout the song like so if, if you were key. to play a guitar solo yeah, over the yep. song and say um you know say the song is in c um and yeah they might go to f and g but all that all that stuff is you know really really uh pretty much if i just play i could straight play the a minor scale pentatonic adding some little, you know, little nuances that I like to play, you know, it's not pentatonic. Um, these little half step up, you can do, um, these, uh, pull offs and, you know, there's all sorts of things you can do. But in reality, when I listen to a song and there's so many songs, bro, I so mean, many. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we, I was talking about G chord, songs but the thing is is like the key of the g key of g it's funny just him talking since he got back is interesting because me is not a uh, i feel like i'm such a hobbyist musician at heart not even close you know what i'm saying you're but, not a hobbyist that's, that's how i feel though because it's like when we we uh we podcast argued about garth brooks earlier i'm thinking 
well, maybe, maybe that is an NG now. Yeah, I never would have thought about that, right? I'm still like standing by my, <laughs> my, uh, like you said, it goes into E. These e eyes the, are cold and restless. Well, and then, like he just explained, is that that's the the dominant or the primary or what's what's the word you said? He's on his phone right now. It's uh, okay. I'm just I'm checking a <laughs> message. Hold on a second. But it's like it, it's one of those things where, you know, when when you start the song G A, um, maybe G isn't necessarily the maybe G is not necessarily what the 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 key of the song is in. It's what the dominant part is, which I, I understand you saying explaining that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So if you as, as as a beginner musician or somebody who maybe have been playing for 20 years like me um if you're trying to figure out the key to a song you always want to listen to the beginning of the song and you have to know what what chord is playing it can't even, it doesn't even have to be a chord it could just be a bass line just oh, yeah, one sure. a one note thing and so you figure out that note and you're like hmm you know c sharp you know, like the song "Pardon Me" from Incubus, yeah, exactly. is in the is in the key of C sharp minor. That's 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 the Fucking key of that love song. That song. That's like the when I was in high school. That's like the album "Make Yourself" is just fucking the shit. And the reason why I've come up with that conclusion is because the song starts off in C sharp minor. You know, it's like, blah, blah, you know, and he's doing these volume swells in, in, in between. And then, and then it goes, and then, and then when it gets to, right. Yeah. And then when, when it goes into Mike the chorus. Heiser, by the way, back in the day. The shit. Dude, back, he used to play PRS all the time too, back in the day. Love that guy. It, it, the funny the thing is, we talked earlier, it's like he gave me, a little bit of a fun time about like he was going to bring a Gibson Les Paul. I'm like, I've already fucking seen all Les Pauls and stuff like that. PRS for me, I feel like most people, if you're a musician and it's a brand that you like is because what you grew when, when you were into music, what the musicians were, were playing, that's what you gravitated towards. Right. Right. So right. back in, in when I was in high school, so I'm going to go ahead and just, you're going to make fun, but I'm going to go ahead and go for it. Uh, I'm going to think of, uh, the bands, Hard Rock, Incubus, Mike Eisner, Eisner he played... I, it's actually Einzinger. Einzinger, last, yeah. I'm drunk. He he played PRS, uh, Breaking Benjamin, Ben Burnley, PRS, uh, Adam Gontier from Three Days Grace played PRS. Right, right. Um, I mean, all these John guys, Mayer now went from Fender to, to PRS. PRS. Yeah, fuck you, Fender. Anyway, I don't give a shit about Swear that. to God, John Mayer is one of my favorite guitar and players. And apparently, from all the reviews, that guitar is pretty badass, apparently. Uh, the Silver Sky, so, the, the PRS Silver Sky. I mean, I'm not a Strat player, but I, I mean, apparently, it's a pretty badass guitar. I have a custom-built Strat 1998. A Fender Strat that my <clears throat> un uncle built for me. Um, I bought it for five hundred dollars cash. Yeah, and it's a '98 Strat, but he took a American Telecaster neck and put it. So I have a Strat with a Tele neck. <laughs> Dude, wider <laughs> frets and everything, right? Yeah, everything. Oh, Telecaster yeah. Tele head sock. Shit, you not? Yeah, yeah. Uh, USA Tele neck. It's got the skunk skunk stripe on the back. Oh yeah, he had. He why is it, why is there a skunk a skunk stripe? Explain to them so they understand. Well, why, why is that there? Why, why is there a skunk stripe? I mean, because my, of what's in there. No, duh. Okay, so for in my opinion, the the truss that's truss inside the the neck. It's personally, I feel like it. It's because they put a beautiful piece of wood over where the fucking truss rod is. My, mine has like, I, I don't even know what, what it is. He doesn't even know. I mean, he built it for me. I, he brought it over to my house. This is what happened. He brought over a, a Telecaster. It was gold. It was all gold paint. Oh. Straight gold. Uh, gold top? Gold top guitar. Uh, Tele gold ro top. Rosewood. Ooh. Rosewood fucking uh, fretboard. Uh, I think it was uh, Rosewood neck as well. I mean, the oh, whole fucking shit. thing was... The whole thing sounded great. And then he's like, well, I got this other one. Because I just got my taxes back. It was like two years ago. And, <laughs> fucking uh, taxes. Dude. Taxes. Tax, <laughs> taxes uh, make it able to 
uh, for normal people to buy nice guitars mm -hmm. every every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And so he had this this beautiful. Uh, it was swear my life. He opened up the case and it was black fade to forest green with um, this uh, flake. Uh, Gold flake? Yeah, it wasn't gold flake. It was it was just like a, a silver flake that mm -hmm. goes th throughout the paint scheme. So it's black on the outer edges of the Strat, and then as you fade in towards the pickups, it's bright green, uh, uh, forest green. But it's it's like a pretty, pretty legit green color. And then uh, he had this neck on it that I told him I was just I played I played one chord I had the original uh 98 dude the even the tone knobs and the knobs on it were all fucking orange and shit from 20 years of somebody playing on it and he took it and he said the neck that he had originally had for it was something that he didn't like and that when he switched it out and I played on this neck I mean he set it up I mean it has the uh, it just has the bone uh, nut on it dude it doesn't even matter I strummed one I strummed it I swear to God I strummed a G chord on this guitar I plugged it into my amp turned it up threw a little gain on there and fucking went fling. I tuned it up fling, and I was like I was like how much how much and he's like I'll do it for 500 and this is a straight up probably it's american deluxe 98 i want to say 1800 to 2000 dollar guitar i got i got it for really fucking cheap my, my uncle hooked me up and it's been my fucking workhorse guitar since dude you plug it into something with high gain and uh dude it's the most easy guitar you want to play just clean chords on this thing dude with like perfect reverb and some delay just like slight delay on this thing I sing to this guitar all the time. I I don't even touch my Les Paul just because you know I know you and your fucking PRS boy. <laughs> my snobby fucking ass. Yeah, yeah, dude. If I brought my Les Paul though and you played it, I promise you. I, dude, I, I like played, I said, I switched I out the electronics. I switched. Out, I got I got fucking John Petrucci's in the thing. Okay, so, so maybe I'd be saying. more interested. I played old school fucking Les Pauls, heavy as fuck, pieces of wood, and I'm like, okay, I get it. But you know what though? You play a modern precision instrument. That's how I feel. And that's why I keep buying them. Dude, I bought all kinds of PRSs. I really have. So, Well, I look up to you. I've always looked up to you since uh, basically since the first time I ever met you. Uh, I looked up to you, man. You know, I really did. Uh, I looked up to your bands. I looked up to Autumn Falls. I mean, that was the first band oh, I ever saw you in. That was fun back in the day. I actually sat in with you guys, you know. You did, yep. Yeah. And I played drums on Barry Lee Fever's left-handed drum kit because oh, he's a lefty. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Barry, you're lefty, but that's okay. You know what's? Can I share something that's really ironic? Okay. It's okay. not ironic. Barry Lefevre, Chad Grimm, another Irish Irish Mike. He's been on the podcast twice. They're all left-handed drummers I know. Hmm. I barely know any right-handed drummers. Weird. <laughs> you are. I'm a straight righty. But yeah. it's like, I don't know any right-handed drummers barely besides you. And it's like, everybody else is left-handed. I don't get it. I just, I mean, for me, I just, I knew that, I mean, the thing is, I played that night. And we played at the... Uh, Where do we play The American night? Legion down there in, in uh, Wilton. Oh, before it was the Iron yes. Wheel. Before it was the Iron yes, Wheel. Yes, exactly. Yep. Oh shit. Where? What? Justin brought me in there, and he goes, he goes, literally, man. He's like, you need to get up on stage and play the drums. And I sat down on the drums, like, it's like this motherfucker's <laughs> a lefty. How did that go? I don't even remember now. I swear to God, he got on stage. He was trashed. Uh, he Dude, got on I stage. remember that night when we left. He was all over the place. Yeah, and guess what? I ended up staying the night at his house that night with my, with the mother of my uh, children, and we brought her dog. And we went back to his house, dude, in Davenport. I shit you not. And we played for like three more hours, dude. Did you really that night? Yes. Yes. I played so. drums on his electronic drum kit. It was amazing. 
So you want to go back in time? Yeah. Fuck yeah. I don't know if we have any pictures of you, but I want to go back to that gig. Cause I'm, I got, cool. I'm cool with that. I got fucking pictures of all the way back then. Uh, let's go to uh, see all. Let's go way back. Iron Wheel Pub. Is this the one? Mm. American Legion? Is that him? Justin Watts? He would have been here, yep, on the right here. There's me, dude. That's me right uh, there. No, that's Barry. That's Barry. That is Barry. I should Are you that. fucking kidding me? Yeah, look, there's the SG. There's the SG. Holy shit, you played it live. The same guitar. Same that, guitar. That thing has some age on it now. So, 11. 2011, though. Still, eight years ago. Eight fucking years ago. Is that when we met ago. eight years ago, then? Is that what this first time we met? It says 95 of 09 on your fucking thing right there. Just look, there. no, look at the top. Look at the top of your screen. Go back. See? 95 of 09. Oh, of 09. They were just published in 11. So, oh, my God. I told you it was 09, dude. 10 years ago. 10 years, dude. Fuck, I remembered. Man. I remembered. Because I got drunk with my baby mom that night. I knew my kid wasn't even born yet, dude. <laughs> We got hella fucking trashed. Actually, I, I was actually the most sober one at that show. I'm wearing my Deftone shirt there. Oh, dude. Rocking the SG. Totally fucking no facial hair. Just, I felt, let me, let me explain to you. Hey, hold on. I got a little something. He's got, he's got a little something there. Uh, no grays. Look at that. Yeah. No grays. <laughs> he's looking good. No, listen, man. This is what, this is the way I felt. I felt like, man, I got a, I got a big shoes to fill, you know, as With far as what, as far as uh, guitar playing, gu drumming, no. all that shit. I felt like you were a great musician, dude. I'm I not. Really did. No, I really you wasn't. are a great musician. No, I'm not. You're a fucking uh, asshole. If, you, if it, I'm an asshole, you're a pure asshole. asshole. I'm a pure fucking asshole. That's all I am. I'm not a great musician. You know what I am? I'm a part-time motherfucker. Is what I am. I'm letting you know right now that on this podcast, it's good to have a D and D. And uh, it is. That's very, very good. Drink uh, responsibly. Drink responsibly, people. Don't be an idiot, you know. Don't be. Uh, I'm having uh, somebody come from Muscatine to come get me here. It's been a damn near two hour thing. And I. I the reason why Joe Rogan, when he goes four four hours on his things, I'm well, just, usually three, but yeah. I know it's normally like between two and three. Unless but. we have like uh, what's what's his name? Uh, the uh, I feel like the last time we did three plus hours on Joe Rogan was. Um, You're right. <clears throat> this thing goes by so quick. Oh my god! It does, right? Oh so, my God. <laughs> so if we could do anything, because I feel like at this point we've been doing this for a couple hours almost. I want to talk about what have we talked about so far at Ed Madison podcast project number 30? What have we talked about? We've talked about uh, Josh, Joshua, Josh or Josh. I just go by Josh. I call him Josh. We, Josh, we've talked about his past when he started playing drums, you know, uh, then he started playing guitar. We didn't talk about your McDonald's employment, though. <laughs> that That's the thing that pisses me off. That's the biggest thing. <laughs> the reoccurring joke has ended because I don't, I don't, I'm not a trainer. That's not a reoccurring like, joke that's ended. It, that thing is on for every fucking podcast. Sorry. So I sweep floors for, for McDonald's. You know, the best part about that job is. What is it? They respect motherfuckers that get the corners clean. You gotta get right, the right, corners. Right. So it's a trick. You gotta get in there. Uh, 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 yeah. uh. And yeah. then the dust, the dust on the fucking, on the, on the, on the little things that are on the uh, edges of like, you know, you got these little things, get this little fucking dust. You got to fucking scrape it off with your fucking finger. And then you see what you're working with. And then you grab that Windex. Windex works for everything, by the way. It does. You can literally clean your toe with Windex if you need. Can I say something really quick? I want you to. McDonald's. Thank you for paying for all those PRS guitars I bought over the years. I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. No, no doubt, no doubt. So also, and you're playing, dude. I, I am just don't, don't fucking downgrade yourself because you're I'm, fucking playing a I'm fucking a, amazing. I, I just, you know, it's like it's one of the things is, is that if I can do it for the fun of it, why not? Because I don't know. 
I, I mean, it's like, I, I'm going to keep doing it and embarrassing myself. Wait, we never talked about your uh, tone wood amp. Oh, yeah. So anyways. We're not, right. we're not sponsored, by the way, but we're going to talk about this. If we were, we, it, we'd, you know. To the top. I, you know, to the top. Yeah, to the top. We'd be top tier. Uh, Tonewood amp, you know, I, I, I'd love to just describe the amp and just uh, actually just plug it in and everything. Anyways, I saw this thing on the internet. There's a lot of my friends that have them now. I mean, I was the first guy out of all my friends that decided to take the leap and buy one. And then... My, About 220, is that? Hmm? 220? 229 plus tax. Not so, bad. Not bad. So, Dude, if you heard this, it's awesome. It's, it's Tell them what it does. Okay, so so flat out, this this little module, It's basically it's just it's a little amp doesn't they don't describe the power of the amp so i can't tell you it's a 50 watt or guess what the amps all get uh described through when you plug it into a real amp you can plug this thing into a 50 watt amp i shit you not it will fucking blow your mind but he shits you not but what it's made for is to be in a room with just a couple people you're playing your songs Um, and, and it hooks right up to the back of your guitar. I, I mean, I'm just going to show it right here. Look. Here's an actual Tonewood amp. Actual. Bring somebody else that has a Tonewood amp. I'll be, I'll give you 20 bucks. Well, so before we did the podcast and even the recordings of the, the, he did some covers and it was awesome because you could hear the effects you put it on the back of the guitar. I took it off the guitar and showed you. You can't hear nothing. He did it. It was amazing. It's like it's like you you just playing and then boom, you turn it on. Effects. I mean, straight up comes right through the wood of the it's guitar. Fucking Harry Potter magic is what that shit is. It's amazing, and uh, the fact that I got to show EMPP <laughs> slash Nasid Amd. Ed Madison. I, I actually figured out this is how this is how hard it was, man. I this is a true story. You know what Nasadamdi or whatever it is, right? Nasadamdi. It's my name spelled backwards. I know that. Yeah. I know that. Right, so right, I right. I've already dude, I posted that on my page, right? Oh, did you? Yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Ed Madison spelled back. I said subscribe to semicolon Nasadamdi dot 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 Ed Madison spelled backwards with a wink eye. Winky. Winky. With face. a wink eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, we killed a whole bottle. It wasn't nothing. No big deal. No big deal. And we actually drank before the podcast. So. Yeah. We actually had a few drinks before this one. Is that is that him? Who? Justin. On the Who right. Who the fuck is that on the... Who? You don't have any pictures of Justin? Watch on him. Uh, there was some tension there at the I end I know there was tension, but guess what? We had tension too, me and him. Because his... You know, his drinking and shit. And we had done so many things uh, musically. <sighs> musically, they were amazing. And Can I share he was this? my best friend. I know he was. And th I feel like, in all fairness, I want to be 100% clear on a couple things before hey, we, we... Fact we, of the matter, though. You first can take off, that with you if you want to... We killed this whole fucking bottle. Take that with you, by the way. This is the first time I've ever seen anybody say, we killed a whole bottle killed on whole his podcast. Bye. So, Mr. Welsh, mm -hmm. I know you guys are friends. Best friends. Best friends. Mm -hmm. and He's my best friend. It's funny because as soon as you brought that, I'm like, oh. That's how I met you. It's like, him. God damn it. That's right. That's how we met, too. I'm like, man. Mm -hmm. he, he, did drink, he, he did drink a lot, right? Yes. His dad drank. He had just gotten his, into drinking, too. Like his he dad had, drank a lot, too. Bro, bro. His dad still drinks a lot, but guess what? His dad's still... He's, oh, he's still a total alcoholic, but uh, I hope... Sean, Sean, I love you. Listen, Justin had just started drinking when he started Is fucking... Is that when it happened? Yeah, he had just started... Like, his life was totally sober. He got mad at me so many times if I would ever drink a beer all these all these years. Um, you know, we're talking like what, 2010, 2011 or some shit like was that. It a car accident? Is that what it was, right? Yeah, yeah, he, he died. fucking hit died in a car accident. Yeah, he got drunk. This is what happened. He called me up that day. 
told me he loved me. Uh, he had told me that I'm the best musician that he's ever known. Please come over. Please come over. You know, that's pretty much what it happened. And I said, dude, I'm back. I'm in Wilton. I was drunk. I couldn't drive. And uh, this is some real shit. And he was like, that's okay. It's okay, man. I still love you. I just want to let you know, man, that I love you, bro. And that's what he said. And then the next day, was... I got, yeah, mm -hmm. the next day, I got fucking calls on my, my phone had so many uh, e uh, voicemails on it. I was like, what the fuck is going on? My phone was going off crazy. And I was laying in bed straight hungover. And I was like, all right, I'll listen to a voicemail. Like, uh, you know, I just grabbed my phone. It's like, why am I getting so many voicemails today? Jesus. And I, hey, the first voicemail I listened to was from my friend. He was like, hey, Fox, I knew, I know you know a guy named uh, Welch. Just letting you know he died last night. And that that's what happened. That's what happened. That's how I found out about his death. So I instantly messaged my baby's mom, who worked in Davenport, she come down and picked me up because I didn't have, we didn't have another car. We only had the one car that she took. And I said, drive me to Justin's house now. Like I was pissed. I said, he's not answering his phone. Drive me to his house. And we drove to his house and his mom and dad were standing outside. And I saw like six or seven people standing outside. And he, uh, his mom hugged me she was pretty much like one of the meanest women i've ever met she's dead now too his mom she died from liver away. cancer like two years later dude from out drinking herself she she completely drank herself to death yeah straight up over his death straight up yeah so she died but anyways she she actually she actually came to me and for the first time ever in like 10 years that i've been friends with justin welch she she went and put her arms around me and hugged me and straight up cried in my shoulder so hard there was snot on my fucking shoulder, dog. And I went inside his house. This is like hours right after he died. His whole family was in there. And they all hugged me. They were like, you're his best friend. You're the only one, you know. And um, they all treated me with such utmost respect and that's pushed me to be the best musician I can ever be in my life, dude. Because I know what he would be telling me. Dude, quit being him. He, This is what Justin Walsh would say. Dude, you're the best drummer I've ever met. I'm, I'm a drummer. I'm a drummer in his eyes, you know. He thinks I'm a drummer. I, I think the same because that's how I met you, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. But... I'm not just a drummer, dude. I'm a musician. Right. Dude, you're awesome. You're a musician. I knew I that. Love music. I know you are. I know you are. I know that. And that was it, man. Uh, he was the guy. Justin Welch was the. Is how I met you, through Justin Welch, straight up. He he talked about you all the time. I how he that. had this guitar player who was super solid. Oh whatever. Super Don't solid. Bullshit. Me. Super solid, but could not sing. <laughs> That's what he fucking told me. I swear to God, that's what he sing. told me. I didn't sing back then. I, I know. There's no microphone. I know. There's no microphones in front of me. I know this. He told me, dude, he cannot sing, but he can play some solid ass guitar. <laughs> and I and I, I, I watched you one time, and I was like, but you didn't talk to me at all. You you literally saw me walk in with Justin, and you literally were like on well, your own thing. Maybe, with the band, you were like setting up. You were so worried about setting up. I was, just I like, was nervous, probably. Oh, yeah. It was I new. was nervous, too. It was new for me. Fuck, I was nervous. At that point, had you had been like, uh, had you played with Corporate Rock yet at this point? Oh, yeah. I'd, I, way before that. For seven years. So I'd it's played. new for me. You played live before I ever did. Yeah, I was a live player when I was. I Dude, mean, my, I'm just a fucking noob at this point. I knew you were a noob too, but by your playing style. It's obvious. By your playing style. I just saw like I saw a lot of fucking, you know, like basically what I saw out of you when I first saw you play was like little A major, little A major, little G major. Dude, listen. But 
once I was in Nile Seraph, and that was the first time I ever actually saw you at like years later, like a like two or three years oh, yeah. later. Yep, yep. And I saw the way that you played. Yeah. I was instantly impressed. You know, oh. I was impressed. I was I was very impressed by your playing, man. I mean, dude. I'm impressed by you as a human being. I'm impressed by your playing. No. Come on, dude. Well, I'm a hobbyist. What am I, a fucking retard? You know, like, I'm, a, you know I'm a hobbyist. Uh, I'm a hobbyist. Whatever. I, I drink. I a drink. hobbyist. I drink and I know things. <laughs> Listen, how many times? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think, you know, at this point, you know what we really should do? Let's play some fucking drums. Play some drums. Let's do it. Let's go play some drums. Let's give a send off. You guys ready? Hey, everybody, the next video is going to be me doing some double bass, uh, polyrhythms, uh, blum, 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 blum. with some snare action. Blum, blum, blum. Edward Madison, though, let me, listen, here it oh, is. I got to get back in the mic. Oh, shit. When you stand outside half an shit. inch from this mic, you can't hear shit, but listen, I love this man, all right? And I've been telling everybody for years that I love this fucking man. I love Ed Madison. Look at this guy. He's a fucking amazing musician. Amazing. No, 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 You no. fucking bastards. No, 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 no. You know what I do? I part-time this shit just for the fun of it. This is like the podcasting, the musicianship. It's like it's part-time. This guy, he'll tell you what's the key of the song. He knows. You will never pull up a song that I can't figure out the key. He's the man. I swear to God. He's Go ahead. <laughs> send send your songs to me. Send your songs to me. Send them. Swear to, the, to God. Send them. Send, send every them. single motherfucking song to me. And then put me up against the Google. Uh, 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 Jesus. Uh, the, the, it doesn't even matter. Dude, look. Ed Madison. The guy has put on songs for me so many times. Josh Fox, are you coming back next year? Yeah. What, for a podcast? Fuck yeah. Uh, of course. We're out. You know what? Thanks for hanging out tonight with us. Josh Fox hanging out. Episode number 30. I can't believe I've done this this many times now. And you 30 know times he got drunk. 30 times. It's only 30 times I've gotten drunk in my life. Can you believe it? That's it? In <laughs> one year? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> This is not the first bottle of Balvenie. Look, we, we killed that whole bottle. It was like nothing. Here. You can Here, take, uh, this, yeah, take no, that no, with no. you. Oh, okay. Look, guys. My bottle now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll see you next year. We've got all kinds of guests planned for next year. Josh is going to come back next year. I didn't ask him Of course him I will. Are you going to come back next year? Of course year? I will. We're going to make it work. I won't cancel. We'll make it work next year, too. Love you guys. Love you too. Yeah. You know what? Be good to be good to your friends, your family, because that's all we have in this life. Everything with, that we have in this life is just is it's completely uh, just so weird, you know. And we we all have to just just be cognizant of you know uh, where uh, we're going and and what's happening. And I just everything that happens. You know, in my life, I just, I just one hundred percent have to make sure that it's happening in such a way that uh, just helps. You know, and if it's not helping me, I don't want it. I don't want it anymore. Bye. Keep the bad shit out of your life. Keep the good shit in your. Say uh, goodbye to the bad shit. Say, say hello to the good shit. You know, I mean, that's it. Give me a nice wide angle goodbye. We'll see you next time. Next year, happy new year, happy fucking holidays.